go. Hello, everybody. Oh, wait a sec. Yeah, no. Sorry for the stuttering sound, but somehow this game still doesn't manage to have sound while it's uh, minimized, huh, as far as I know. Well, what's new? We're going to play some Curse Level 5, and I'm going to try hard as much as possible. Kick some monster butt. And I hope really that uh, one day we'll have some uh, Soulstone survivors with the ability to be giving me sound while I'm while it's minimized. So, what are we going to play? Meanwhile, I have uh, finally managed to unlock every, each and everybody out there. So, uh, we're going to we're going to start on out with a real chill out round with the Sentinel. I know already that the Sentinel should be a piece of cake, but as you see here, I'm trying to get everybody beyond level 60. A few things to grind out still before all the early access is already used up. Well, as you can see here, where uh, I already am scraping on the on the border of uh, Curse Intensity 6. But for today, to warm myself up, I want to uh, finish these two runs here on 5, and then we're going to go further to the 6. So... Let's go. So, uh... The Sentinel is pretty straightforward. It's it's all pew pews and uh, pretty, pretty pretty uh, straightforward stuff. The most beautiful thing about the Sentinel is that you got a really really nice uh, setup for for being uh, for using front loaded skills. Oops, it dashed right into it. So there we go. So, got our first level up. Let's spend that. Oh yeah, lethality. Personally, love to rock lethality uh, on on high levels on the on the sentinel. The skills of this class go so bonkers when uh, when combined with lethality. Let's see. Last couple of runs I had with the uh, with the sentinel were all totally bonkers. So, what are we going to pick? So we can have a uh, piercing shot here. Which is uh, quintuple damage and crits. That's pretty interesting in so far that it pierces enemies. This one, uh, it's a total stinker, I think. And uh, the frag shot. So pierces, and uh, on each impact, we have extra bullets. I'll take that. I personally am a big fan of uh, everything that, uh, that creates extra bullets. The more bullets, the merrier. The more projectiles on a skill, the, the more I value him. So far, the the best formula for uh, DPS builds that I've found. Show me something new if, uh, if you know something. So, multicast on Spretch on Fraction. Uh, th this is one of the best things that can happen to us. It's missile. Uh, it, it's a multiplier to everything missile. So, uh, yeah, 50% of the time we shoot doubling now. Already getting ridiculous uh, right from the get go. So here, I personally value frailty a lot. Why frailty? Every stack of frailty increases the received damage. That's pretty amazing. Especially the more projectiles you have, the more uh, procs of fragility you can stack on somebody, and that goes quite uh, quite nutty. So here again, I'll pick up a cluster bomb because we have 20, uh, 20 smacks on that. So, I dislike each and every one of these, so let's re-roll that. Yeah, 15% uh, global damage up. Whoa. That was a bad spot to level up. Well, so, damage increase versus attack speed. Well, I'll take damage increase. Beautiful thing about the Sentinel is he's uh, one of the few fellas out there whose uh, primary skill ain't total trash. So, six level ups, let's start spending. So, Shrapnel Bomb, that's the most projectiles that I can get out of here. Fateful Strikes, I love the combination of uh, Frailty and Fateful Strikes a lot. So, let's pick up more damage, and let's see, oh yeah, well, Chaos Bolt's also fun. It's also a missile, so it's getting buffed by our that we picked before. Let's pick up some more AoE and, uh, well, some magnetism. Some magnetism never hurts. Thing. 
Alright. So, uh, so far I'm quite happy with that draft. I don't consider it an optimal draft, but it's pretty good already. So, uh, the thing here is every we have uh, two problematic skills. These are bomb skills, and everything else is missile skills. So, we have ideally, I would love to have a, a skill bar that's uh, wholly uh, composed of missile skills or supposed uh, or, or support skills, but uh, for first draft, I have. Uh, so, more area effect for everything frontal than you see here. That's, that's what we're talking about. That's why specialized crafting is really important. Right on. Those poor guys. Jeez, this class is so stupidly strong. Okay, so, well... Chromatic Bolt is pretty fun. Do I keep those bombs or not? Well, I'll keep it. I think I don't need to uh, min-max that hard. So, let's grab ourselves some multicasts, some uh, damage upgrades, and some unhits, some unhit effects, and we're uh, we're set for the remainder of the game. All right, more multicast for everything missile. That's why it would be really great to have more missile skills. Yeah, more faithful strikes. The thing about uh, Faithful Strikes for me is uh, quite simple. It might have a lower damage over time effect than on the other things, but since it finishes off an enemy when the total amount of uh, Faithful or, or, or Doom on somebody exceeds its maximum HP, that means it's guaranteed damage. It'll either trickle down or finish them off. Oh, stop lasering me, dude. And uh, the gist of it is that this is one kind of... Uh, damage over time that's very compatible with uh, bursty builds because it doesn't counteract the burst mechanic. Doom damage is, ex is excellent if you want to kill stuff fast. That's the gist of it. Alright. Bless you. Alright, so powerful strikes never stink because uh, all the damage upgrades also get integrated into uh, your your dot effects. Whoa, poor fellas. You just got annihilated. Just like I expected. So I'm gonna level up once the uh, once we're finished with Tiagro. And you might have noticed that there was a point where he instantly exploded. That was uh, the buildup of those Doom stacks. Doom is insane. I love Doom. So, I don't love Leviathan because I value my mobility. Well, what a shitty roll. So, damage increase on one skill. Usually not my cup of tea, but if it's blue, it's quite potent. Yeah, more multicast. So. Hell yeah, we have a lot of uh, level ups there, so expands it. So here, uh, this run, I I'm trying to avoid to pick up uh, any other damage over time effects because I... I always think that the Sentinel's superpower is being so damn bursty, and therefore uh, Faithful Strikes is what we're going to pick up, because that's, like I said, very compatible with Crit Builds. Right on, so... Uh, let's check it out. I think I'll need a little bit more uh, HP, and uh, a bit more magnetism, a bit more utility or well. Behemoth. A blue, a blue behemoth is something I always love to pick up in between. I don't know. More multicast. More multicast never hurts. Behemoth on that level, you know, there's nothing bad with having a lot of HP overall. As much as I not pick the armor level ups because I personally think they sting, they're just not powerful enough for what you give up. I'm a big fan of uh, Behemoth because, uh, you know, that's real value there. Armor level ups, you need to, to you need to stack them up to make them really powerful. Alright, more frailty. By the way, frailty is uh, extremely important to make uh, anything damage over time truly work. Because, uh, yeah, more multicast. Without frailty, your damage over time doesn't get amplified, and uh, that's... I uh, had one run where I uh, had... 1,200 Doom stacks on a boss, and it wasn't even finishing off with 200,000 HP left. And the other run, I had like 150 Doom stacks, and I imploded somebody with uh, 
more than double these in HP. So frailty is very, very strong. Very, very strong. I think it's one of the uh, key stats to melt down large amounts of HP. Why I'm stacking that when I'm seeing it. You only get a 10% chance of frailty whenever you you, you, you you pick that. It's giving you an impression about how strong it is. And it stupidly multiply, multiplies everything. Especially since it has a very um, sick interaction with the uh, with extra bullets. The more bullets you have, the more procs of frailty you have. The more procs of frailty you have, the more percentile uh, damage increase you get. And as you see there, that's a pretty uh, nasty uh, self propelling uh, death machine where we're totally nuking these bastards. Forgive the language. But uh, there's Kathais, the prophetess, and uh, she, she really pissed me off several times. So. Well, that's working out quite decently, I gotta say. But I, I didn't expect less from the from the Sentinel. That's just such a such a stupidly powerful class, I think. Yeah, more attack speed. Attack speed is always quite nice. This one is a quite uh, crappy. Let's pick up the touch of ice. Some slow never hurts. Spreadshot damage increase. I personally uh, try to grab only the, the multi-upgrades uh, of, of skills and uh, the singular upgrades as is, is, is a few as possible because they are actually the, the worst. Yeah. 15% uh, less cast speed is... Uh... Gotta keep a keen eye out on my, uh, on my HP there right now. A little bit banged up. But beyond that, looking good. Well, the speed we melt down the pillars is uh, very, very um, uh, well, reassuring. I should have picked Gangrene, though. That was a mistake of mine. Gangrene makes a stack of bleeding happen whenever a, a stack of frailty happens. And since I'm specializing in frailty, that's, that would have been a good, uh, a good pick. But whatever. Maybe we get an, uh, another offer. Lethality at this point. You see, AoE is uh, only... I don't know. I, I, I don't consider it such a uh, real powerful stat at the end of the day. You need some, but uh, overcapping it is... Um, well, not as beneficial as other stats. Just put it like that. Yeah. But I won't uh, let go of purple um, area effect. Uh, area effect. Uh, thing like that. Healing. Alright, let's uh, try to keep the pillars dead. They're quite annoying. More of them around, the harder it'll, it'll be to just do your thing and chill out. Alright, so there we go. Oh crap. Got a little bit locked on, uh, on top of the tree. It's really bad when that happens. Oh. That's a pretty good start, and I love every uh, frontal-based uh, build on on the Sentinel. It doesn't matter if you go missile, bomb, or, or whatever. The frontal focus uh, skills are all damn good on this uh, class. As we see here, it's, uh, we're almost speedrunning uh, difficulty 5 here. It's pretty cool. So, four more skills. Let's pick up some Relentless. Yeah, blue damage increase is okay. Some more Faithful Strikes. Basically now, the more Faithful Strikes, the better. Personally a big fan of the Doom stat. More multicast. Yeah. Multicast is so darn powerful. This just multiplies your skills. Just makes them doubly as effective all over the board. There's practically no spell that doesn't uh, get stupidly more powerful with multicast. One of those stats you never can really have too much of. 
quite uh, opposite to area of effect. You can't have too much area of effect. Too much multi multicast, no. not possible. So, uh, yeah, that's why we're picking this, although the other uh, drafts were also quite tasty candidates. But, uh, that's just the most damage. Oh boy. That's quite healthy. Mm, let's reroll that. Well, 10% more crit is 10% more crit. We're already rocking 70%, so pretty decent. Good lord, those poor bosses. So first dude's already down. Alright. They also came with a uh, with a rogue survivor, but uh Jeez. Like I expected. The uh, I personally think the Sentinel is one of the most busted classes right now in the early access, so... You want a trusty companion that gets you through the worst of uh, situations. I would personally always try the Sentinel first, if I really want to win hard. Let's try out to pull that off with the other classes as well. I mean, I knew already that I can do this with that one. But I can I also do with the other ones. That's pretty. That's way more interesting. So let me know in the chat if you're around, or also in the comment section down there below after this video if you didn't catch it live. Uh, what classes you would be interested in to see? To see me tweaking them and uh, trying to get the best DPS out of them. Because you know I need a motivation to weak uh, stuff. I never can do well without motivation. This game is keeping me quite damn motivated for real. Pretty good in that regard. Can't wait for the next updates. Okay, so from this point on, well, I think whenever I'm running into some more survivability, I should well, possibly grab that. We don't need more damage to win this. We actually have a radio on that. So... Sentinel always gives me that feeling, why the hell did I think this was ever difficult with the other classes? But, uh, well, character always had that feeling to me. That definitely is a pretty fun build. You could, uh, to, uh, to optimize it, you could have uh, tossed out the bombs replace them with other missile effects to uh, to maximize the draft's potent, uh, potency. You know. Alright, we're getting into the last boss wave now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Critical strikes have a chance to wound. Yeah, why not? We crit a lot, so... Yikes, that's bad. Whoa, alright. So, stand that close to a wall with these bosses is uh, never a real good idea. I was very, very disrespectful the entire run over, but I mean, there was not really a uh, big reason to play too carefully this time. So, that's okay. So now we're we're more doing the the kite of uh, the kite of death here. All right. So we got the first of the bunch down. That's pretty good. Now this is my typical uh, boss stance. I'm trying to pull circular lines around, but do my best to get them down ASAP. All righty, we got that. That wasn't too surprising, but uh, quite uh, quite uh, rewarding, nevertheless. Alright, so we got that. Dude is on level 60 now, just like expected. 
All right, so which class next? That's the big question. If I don't get any outside input, I'll be, uh, I'll be going to the Paladin now. Paladin comes with uh, pretty good sort assortment of different uh, elemental skills. Swing thrust slam is also pretty uh, pretty decent. Let's check it out. So it's going to be the last of these easier runs before things get truly nastier. I've never tried out uh, Curse Six before. But uh, there's the first time for everything. So here, the Paladin, for example, is one of those dudes where I say their starter skill just sucks. It's okay to get started with, but it's uh, to me nigh impossible to make that thing uh, really work in the long run. I mean, it applies days that increases the critical chance. This basically would allow me to have a decent crit rate without having too much crit rate. But, uh, you know, that's a pretty neglectable bonus. It's cool and all, but it has to be the cherry on the top, but not, uh, not not the main class. So, here we get a free application of frailty. That early on in the game, it actually quite sucks, but, uh, you know, it's a key stat for most of my builds, because, you know, it stacks increasing the received damage. That's free multiplier on everything you do. And even if you don't like to use damage over time things, it's still amazing. So what do we have here? A slam missile burst, and, uh, well... So, I'll take, uh, Demolish, why not? Demolish is amazing. It's one of the best skills that I saw so far in the assortment of the game. Personally love that a lot. Starts out quite weak, but it applies hemorrhage, which is the big brother of bleeding, and therefore it's pretty powerful once it, uh, really kicks into gear. So, let's go for the Fateful Strikes. It's, pretty, it's a bit early for that, but, uh, well, you know, maybe we're going to go for a uh, classic damage over time build this time. Who knows? So. Don't skill my primary skill. I'm not interested in that at all. Because I'm going to replace that ASAP. That's one thing that I uh, discovered about a lot of characters that... Uh, my total DPS was a lot better once I got rid of that uh, basic skill. So we're going to go for Arcane Power, because Arcane Power is amazing. It doesn't do anything except for adding you or uh, adding a stupid amount of multicast on top of your character whenever it's running. It's one amazing support skill, because it just does add in so much potency on top of all your, all your skills and you can't even skill the duration, the cooldown and the uh, amount of multicast it yields so it gets more and more amazing. So what are we going to go for? Beacon of Light, no thanks. So this is one of those typical situations. I don't really want to go for Light Beam because it ain't a missile. So, there's no skill that really fits into my strategy, so let's reroll that. Holy Fire, well, that's more like it. Transforming all stacks of Dazed into Disoriented. I think Disoriented was the, uh, the upgraded version of that. Well, let's pick that up. We could also go for, for Body Slam, but uh, I want to go for something that creates uh, debuffs. We have some weird, uh, screechy noises from outside. Pretty sure you can't hear that on the video, but, uh... Alrighty, so... Yeah, let's go for some classic damage over time. Uh, fun here. So, Lightning Bolt, that's also a missile spell. We're focusing on missiles this time for real, come on. So, Lightning Bolt sucks a bit, but whatever. Holy can holy fire multicast, yes please. So here, uh, increased potency of uh, of arcane power. We're gonna focus a bit on arcane power when we can because that's just such a powerhouse of a uh, support skill. It makes it does make every one of my skills much more powerful. So therefore, it's really worth my time and attention. That character moves a bit slow, so let's change that. Okay, so we need another missile spell. I'm not a big fan of the magic missiles because they require me aiming and I'm a lazy dude, but whatever. So, 
let's go for some touch of ice because if your character is slow slowing the enemy is also quite helpful go for arcane sparks i love that it's also a missile spell and it's uh, another uh, another lazy dude spell you know all right so more fateful strikes i even for go i even picked that over the damage increase of that spell more speed on the arcane sparks is please And uh, we're going to replace. We're going to replace there. I don't like Lightning Bolt too much. Flurry is also pretty cool, but it ain't a missile spell, so. Well. But you know what? We're, we're going to replace the Magic Missiles. The Magic Missiles, don't get me wrong, is a really good spell. But I. Uh, I don't like those uh, spells too much where I constantly need to track the uh, enemy with my cursor. So... We're, we ain't playing a sentinel anymore. The enemy ain't melting uh, like crazy. So, multicast and everything electric. Let's do it. Didn't expect that to happen, but whatever. So the thing is, the more, uh, the more common denominators your skills have, Together, the better. So basically, drafting electric missiles is better than drafting only missiles. Because you have a higher chance of uh, all your skills getting buffed this way. Alright, but I think we do have a pretty decent draft that should get us somewhere. Right, more damage for that. Multicast for everything missile. Now we go. Alright. I still feel like the Sentinel is a little bit overbuffed compared to the other crit classes. I find it always much harder to have the same success with other classes, but whatever. Maybe I'm just good at, at drafting that, I don't know. So, there we go. But that's a pretty decent start already. So, a blue damage increase thing. Let's pick that up. Oh boy, shockwave. But it ain't a missile, so we're not going to pick it this time. So, yeah, increased potency here and frailty here, increased duration. So, the goal here is to get arcane power running permanently. That's the big goal. Alright, so, well, that's difficult, but I'll take the uh, global multicast, I think. Although I think more damage on that skill would have been uh, actually more effective. Hey Shishiro, hi there. Happy to see you, man. Glad you're around today. So, I'm using those soul stones also as a uh, as a ways and means to uh, grab all items on the screen. So uh, here I'm starting to forgo other things for, for our uh, Doom stats. Oh damn, I should have picked Relentless. That was, that was wrong. I want to have more cast speed so the, uh, I get a permanent multicast of Arcane Power. Because permanent Arcane Power is uh, well, it's pretty nutty. Every character that has access to the support skill. It's one of the most powerful things that I that came across my uh, him, uh, that I came across during my adventures. Okay, so let's see. Thermal shock. Well, no. More more AoE for everything. Missile is just too tasty. There we go. The larger they get, the easier they are to hit. Ah, I'm lazy with games like these, I admit it. Right on. So, let's start picking up other damage over time effects, since our skills now are huge. They, they hit a lot of people, they get a lot of multicast. So, it's now time to make sure that whenever somebody gets touched by all our stuff, it really starts to hurt. Alright, so, frailty always the most preferable thing. So here, well, multicast is the best thing that I see here. 
And uh, yeah, let's go for Relentless. So let's see, 27 right now, and 23 then. So let me see. We're getting somewhere. Spontaneous Combustion, Faithful Strikes. So now I'm really trying to uh, start and rack up the amount of effects that happen whenever I punch a dude. Personally think that crit-based builds that are bursty are faster, but at the same time, damage over time-based builds are safer, because you just need to graze the enemy, and then you can run away and let the dot do their job. I really need some uh, agility on that dude, it's way too slow. So, let's pick up more Faithful Strikes. So we have now five stacks of that skill, that means we have now a guaranteed application of that skill per blow. Or staff, I should rather say. But uh, I really need to speed up my dude. So whenever we see a opportunity for agility now, I shall take it. Because that's just the thing, there's so much stuff on the screen to dodge, Darn hard, the slower you are. Movement speed is one of the most invaluable stats in a game like that. The less you have of it, the more hard it game, eh, the game is. So. Okay. Let's see what we can draft here. Oh, legendary damage increase. Now that's something useful, I'd say. So, using the wall to block the laser. Sometimes it's smarter to keep a bit of your distance to uh, to the enemy. So, biggest downside of this run so far. I didn't draft any uh, any agility mods, or I didn't see them when they came up. Though, so, more multicasts, why not? Only affecting two of my skills. Not the optimal choice there, obviously, but also not the worst. So, more potency on the, on the multicast, I uh, have a hard time saying no. And the next volley of bosses is around. So this run is a lot harder than the, the last one, admittedly. We're also slower, but whatever. Yeah, more Fateful Strikes, and finally, a 20 person agility buff, so... Let's see, er, yeah, frequency, cast frequency, that should also decrease the cooldown, so we're now only 7 seconds without our buff. We're getting there. Not as uh, powerful as the Sentinel build that we had in the last run, but it's pretty decent. I mean, I'm still killing the three bosses before the next round uh, spawns, so that means the damage is okay. Right, some more cast speed reduction. Only four seconds now. The rest should be easy pickings. I'll pick Agile now, wherever I can. Even the 10 person uh, version, because, you know, we just need it. We, we don't have enough projectiles in that build, that's by the way uh, why enemies aren't. Uh, melting as fast as with the other build there. So, let's notch up the attack speed, why not? But at the end of the day, I hope we're just going to win that level of There we go. So, we're trying to opt into damage over time, this build really doesn't pull off its job too well. So. But I know where my mistake was. 
should have uh, not went into that strategy with a low amount of projectiles like that. That was the big mistake. You know. Let's see if we can drive it home nevertheless. So doing my uh, my circles around these guys with quite some respect. Don't want to suffer too much damage there. Okay, let's uh, let's go for some beacon sweep. Maybe grab a bit of uh, stuff on the way. Whenever my HP are as low as that, I really like to do that because I don't like to get uh, to get myself killed that easily. So frequency, I think we are almost there. So. Firing down yet? Oh boy, I think I just... Uh, I, I ran into the death laser of uh, okay, guys. That's my bad. Didn't even notice she was around. I shouldn't have uh, her like that. But that's what you got your extra lives for, you know? Don't try to expect... Or, or don't expect to win this without your... Uh, without the extra lives there. So, good morning, GM. Ah, we're, we're, we're really uh, good today. Yeah, well, this is uh, this ain't really working well today either, Shishiro, but... Uh, I did uh, I did no life this game a little bit uh, during the last couple of days, so I learned my fair share. Here, the big mistake of mine is just that this doesn't have enough projectiles to be a, uh, a well-working god. Oh, god. I saw it coming and then I dashed uh, directly into it. Oh, yuck. I hate when that happens. Not happy with that one. But, uh, how could you be happy after the success, the, the big success story of your, uh, of a Sentinel? They're just too good, you know. Alright, so, uh, that sucks. Debilitating plague. Yeah, that's quite bad. Well, ain't the worst run so far I had on this difficulty level, so I'm okay with that. Just a little bit sad that I'll die any moment now. Although I'm, I'm I'm surprisingly alive for those uh, four HP that I'm rocking since uh, almost thirty seconds now. Now it's gone. So really surprised about the fact how long they took, but uh, the build sucks. That's uh, there's no there's no uh, way uh, should be coding that. So exorcism, dealing damage and healing myself for each enemy hit. Are you kidding me? We gotta play that. So let's restart that with a holy build, my men. So, uh, Void, I there. Um, how many hours do I have in that? Let me give a check. Uh, we're, we're clocking now 38 hours. I did take my breaks every now and then because I know that a game that's so early access like this should be, uh, should be taken, um, should be, should be enjoyed accordingly. You did all the content already, so even the highest difficulty levels. Kudos. Took me a while to figure out how to uh, how to get past uh, intensity five. Gotta say, I was basically the longest pod. Now I'm not uh, really willing to uh, to go for that uh, gamble to make an eight minute speed run after discovering that the key for speed running is to camp uh, in the vicinity of the of the mob spawners. Correct me if you have something better than that, and draft as much damage as possible, of course, to kill them as fast as possible. But, uh, yeah, let's go Faithful Strikes while that. Was the best combo was maximizing DPS, maximizing uh, a little bit of movement speed so I could get better from one spawning to the next. 
and then just DPS, DPS, DPS to kill them as fast as possible because it seems like there's an internal timer. Whenever I kill a group, there's an internal timer before the next group spawns at the spawner before. So, uh, well, the eight minute run is just a thing of luck and I just... Uh, at that point, well, I gotta say, at that evening I, I did all the win within 12 minutes uh, achievements uh, there and uh, I was kind of kind of not uh, liking it anymore. Ah, the, uh, the runes do uh, do something. I, I kind of like hope for something like that. Well, let's take a venomous one out. So we're, we're building holy this time. We're, we're, we're focusing on everything holy this room. And uh, yeah, the other thing that really helped my uh, my my builds was to realize that your 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 draft should always focus at least on one characteristic, and then you try out which characteristic of the character you like most. Like now we're trying holy and uh, and the like. So uh, all these options suck. Don't like them. Er doesn't get better from here, but uh, I'll take the flurry, thank you. Don't want to burn my uh, all my uh, rerolls into that. And flurry ain't a holy skill, but it ain't the worst. So I haven't had lag too much yet. Well, I, I don't like these beam builds because I find them extremely annoying to play. Tracing the enemy with my cursor the entire time is making my is making my brain go numb at some point. Personally, love everything that uh, fires in the arc in front of me because that allows me to just uh, stray fire into a direction that's way uh, way more chilled for me than uh, those those beam spells. That they have the most damage. I, I see that, but uh, I also don't like using them. Um, what CPU am I using? I have no clue now. I, uh, I got an IT dude that, uh, that supports me with fine hardware. Or, more like, he chooses what, what's great and I'll just pay for it. And, uh, you know. I'm not that tech-savvy, you know. Just bores me, that topic, I gotta be quite honest. Right on. So we don't get any holy skills here. Thank you, game, for uh, countering my plans that well. So let's pick up arcane power because arcane power is just great. Our area of effect on that. So uh, well, that selection sucks. Let's re-roll re that. Blades of light multicast. Definitely not gonna take that. Yeah, well, the game ain't well optimized yet. I see. Yeah, give the give those dudes time. Product is pretty fresh, so uh, they'll just they'll get there. So finally, holy fire, and uh, let's go for a more expansive, more damage increase. So now we're just going to pass on everything that ain't holy. And whenever we find some holy spells that seem feasible, we're going to put them into our run. And also this time I'm going to be smarter and just uh, pick up some more agility before the situation is snowballing so hard against me. I look really bad on the last run. So Chromatic Bolt comes in as a, uh, you know, Chromatic Bolt is always uh, whatever you want it to be. I love that spell, by the way. Chromatic Bolt is such a fun one. He's all the elements at once. And uh, it's a ricocheting uh, projectile, so uh, you only put it on one enemy and then it does its thing. It gets all its bonuses from all the different spells. I kind of adore that spell. So. Yeah, well, the infinite game mode, I, I do like what the devs uh, wrote about that, uh, especially the part where they stated, like, Everything that goes longer than 40 minutes is going to be boring anyways, and nobody should or could be, uh, or nobody should be playing substantially longer than that because the game just doesn't get more exciting once you have a build that just deletes everything on the screen in one go. 
I, I don't see uh, any fault in that argument. So, um, you know, let's check that out. Do I really have now a stupid spell that heals me? Jeez, that's so damn tasty. So. That feels like cheating, man. It might be a bit short range, but, uh, dude. Healing is usually so hard to come by in this game, and now I have something that just heals me whenever I do damage to somebody. Amazing. We just need to enlarge that spell accordingly, and then we got a good life here. So, multicast on everything holy. There we go. That's the spell we require. That ain't holy here, so, well, let's pick up lethality. Yeah, area of effect. 10% uh, more damage and everything. Although the magnetism was uh, teasing me quite a lot, technically magnetism is not that necessary on curse runs, because you can, on the higher difficulties, just bank your soul stones, and whenever you want to collect everything, you just snatch one of them, and uh, then they suck all the XP towards you. That's a pretty nice trick that I uh, enjoyed a lot. on. So, Beacon of Light, um, emitting a blessed aura, that sounds like a crappy skill to begin with. So, well, but I think it ain't it ain't crappier than my initial skill, so let's do this. Impending Doom, yes please, because uh, we have that interesting interaction between da between uh, Queen Days and, uh, and Doom. All the skills do trigger a lot of days, and therefore Days and Doom go well together. Yeah. I agree with that, Void. I, I also felt like this game is uh, favoring everything that goes very offensive. Much more than uh, any defensive approach. All these armor stats, they are basically not worth drafting in my experience. It's always more effective to have more HP and uh, and just play safer. Go for high distance skills that allow you to hit the enemy before they can really get close to you and don't uh, waste your time on armor. Just, uh, just, just buckle up more damage. Behemoth is the only one that uh, that I really like. Ah, yeah, and dash, dash. Good thing that you know that you mentioned it. On higher difficulty levels, basically, whenever you draft an extra dash, your success rate has uh, increased substantially because it's just that damn important. So, uh, same with agility. Here, as much as I want to have, um, as much as I want to have Doom on my build because I love Doom, I. I personally think the game is nigh unplayable if your move speed ain't high enough, because of the uh, extreme amount of uh, AoE fields, you know. I noticed that when I was playing with the Death Knight, which is uh, strictly non-dash, you know, you can't dash with that character. But it doesn't matter if you have enough MS to begin with. If you're just fast enough, you also don't need to dash. It's the same logic, you know. Well, they did try to uh, uh, to motivate us towards um, builds that stack armor. There are skills that get stronger when we stack armor, but I personally think they are not uh, they are not strong enough yet. You know, like most of these uh, st skills, they all they are. Well, okay, I need to go get somewhere else. I think that all the skills that have many projectiles are way too overpowered right now. That's my personal stance. It's basically the more projectiles on a skill, the better. Period. Frontal bursts, but they don't do enough exactly. There's, uh, I, I personally think that every frontal skill that emits 20 projectiles will be always way stronger than any souped up version of these uh, defensive stacking things. It's just like that. If I can have the chance to apply 
20 stacks of doom, 20 stacks of frailty and the like at once, versus buying only one stack of these in exchange for admittedly a higher amount of damage per, per projectile, but that doesn't matter at that point. That doesn't really matter at that point. At some stage of the game it's more about what we transport on the on top of the enemy with our uh, with our attacks. Whee! Get lasered. So. But uh, at the same time, I still think uh, this is still the most uh, challenging uh, Vampire Survivor's life that I've played in a positive way. Sure, of course, when you start no life in games like I did there, and as we like all we all did, you notice that there are a certain amount of uh, exploitable mechanics. But uh, I didn't feel so far as if there was uh, one mechanic that was so stupidly broken that I had to play it on each and every character, and uh, it wouldn't work without. Except for the dominance of it, of movement speed. Okay, if you would consider that a build. Okay, but apart from that, it's, uh, the game's work is doing extremely great for its current state. And uh, I enjoyed it for being the most challenging game in that department that I played since a while. Jeez, I'm not taking any uh, serious damage while diving for these guys. The healing spell is stupidly strong. Because it's a Nova that uh, just bursts out of uh, uh, my character. That means whenever I'm inside the uh, fray, that's when that spell picks the hardest, so really enjoyable thing. Well, Lloyd, I think that's a sentiment that's uh, true for most games of this genre. There's always going to be one, uh, one certain way of doing things best. You see that on every game out there, be it a MOBA, be it a PvP game, and the like. There's uh, gamers are always uh, enjoying it a lot to, uh, to to just min max the hell out of it, and every system has some optimal paths. You know, no matter how you design a system, there's always going to be some paths that are more efficient than others. When we're uh, engineering things, we're actively searching for these things because that's, those are usually the uh, most stable and effective structures. So it comes by the nature of these things. We always uh, hope for that build that or, or that game that allows us to uh, to play the quirky and crazy builds and still make them work. But at the end of the day, that's uh, I think that's an illusion that we that doesn't really uh, that doesn't really. Uh, come to reality at some point. That's the true sentiment, nevertheless, yeah. These, uh, these group upgrades are so much more stronger than uh, anything else that uh, I agree with you on that part. I think also the singular um, upgrades for the skills meet, need to be way stronger. There, there should be a much higher um, incentive to um, to specialize more into one skill. Right now, we're uh, all funneled into uh, building generalists of a certain build. We go holy to think to hope that to get as many level ups for the holy school as possible. But if uh, if we'd have a system where the uh, I don't know upgrading a single a single spell is uh, like. Uh, four times as powerful as it is now, we would really consider to either rely on the single gun in our shelf or or trying to spread out the goodness all over the board, you know? I would, I think I would really prefer a system like that where we could uh, have more meaning in the uh, singular skill upgrades. Because here, for example, I'm only picking increased potency on arcane power because arcane power is so stupidly strong. All the other skills, I try to avoid the uh, singular upgrades, especially the green ones, because they, they basically suck. They, uh, they really don't bring enough meat on the, on the table. 
if it ain't blue, it ain't much when it's co when it's coming down to single spell to single skill upgrades. And that's a bit sad. Alright, I see I think we're we're doing a lot better than the last time. Nevertheless the damage isn't uh isn't where I'd like it to see, so let's see. But uh it doesn't really matter that much if the damage ain't as high as I want it to be, because I'm uh, virtually not taking damage. There's only short moments where I'm taking a bit of damage, but this exorcism spell is so stupidly strong. But I mean, sure, when I saw that it heals me, whenever I hit somebody, I knew that I hit a jackpot. So, uh... That's one of the amazing spells out there. So, yeah. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm most pissed about the fact how important those Agile upgrades are. And if you get trolled by Agile upgrades, aka you don't draft them, your run is uh, almost not playable, or so much stupidly hotter that, uh, you know, it's a bit sad. So now, for example, my Paladin has, uh, yeah, I don't know, let's check it out. How much move speed increase do we have at this point? Here, 115%. That's what I drafted. And that's what I now find uh, feasible, you know. Oh, whoopsie. Damn. I always forget that you lose the Banish from the Thurser at that point. No. I don't even know what crap I drafted now. But it ain't, doesn't it? It ain't matter. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter too much. Jeez. Fucking. But for all of the long-term viewers, there's one good thing to uh, denote today. I'm feeling health-wise really great today. So, uh, took a bit of a uh, break time there because we had uh, everything good from the kindergarten again. And uh, feeling a lot better today again. One of the downsides of being a self-employed content creator. You can't really take down times when you're ill. It just doesn't come together because we need to earn money. But whatever. I don't really want to complain. At least I got a job that I can't do without uh, falling apart while I'm ill. <laughs> so right now I'm soaking a little bit more damage than is good for me. Ah, come on. Let's take the legendary multicast of the um, chromatic. So, I didn't get to draft too many uh, conditional upgrades this time, so we're we're playing a very classic build this time. Classic holy damage dealer. Working out really decently. Exorcism is uh, just uh, just an amazing nightmare to begin with. So let's add up more faithful strikes and uh, fra uh, frailty. And the rest should be easy pickings. Alrighty. So, almost there. Yeah, some powerful strikes. Why not? Ten person more damage and everything. Nothing wrong with that. It's a bit underwhelming, but uh, at least at least it's omnipotent, so uh, it's uh, it's something for everybody. Five person ain't much better, but at this point, all the other stats aren't uh, too appealing. The only thing that I want right now is to stack up more frailty and uh, do strikes. So we can't finish off the dudes faster, but beyond that, we're doing amazing. To be honest. Ah, oh, you know what? We're, we're going to kill some spires. Slay the spire! Soulstone Survivor's Edition. Right on. So we are 100 enemies away from uh, the next boss encounter. Usually I'm uh, focusing the uh, spires way more. But, you know have such few problems with my HP that I actually didn't uh, bother this time.
Okay, damage increase of something totally not interesting. Whatever. What I got here should be really enough to take down those baddies. Not optimally, but uh, who cares. Still got all my extra lives available, so... most amazing part about this build so far is that I'm uh, not taking any substantial damage while diving back and forth through the enemies. It's usually something I'm, I'm trying to avoid to do. So, pretty fun build now. There we go. Frailty is uh, by far one of my favorite uh, debuff um, thingies there. This just plays so damn well with everything. It's not like uh, Combustion or, or Venom where you're like, eh, well, you really want that. Of course you want to uh, take the enemy more damage from every source out there. Why shouldn't you? Consider it one of the most valuable debuffs in the game. I really hope that, by the way, this, what we're seeing here, doesn't happen in the future anymore. I kind of like, think it sucks when you have two, two times Alexei the Plague Bearer. It's not because it's so difficult or anything, but it feels just wrong, you know, to have the same boss two times. I mean, sure, it's early access, but uh, I really hope that's not an in a intended thing. That's all I'm trying to say. Hope they're not doing this intentionally. There we go. Damn, this is going well. So compared to the first time, we uh, we are doing way better. Yeah. Green damage damage upgrades are the worst, but uh, under these circumstances, it doesn't really matter too much. Holy crap, the drafts here are really, really uh, letting me down too. Uh, the, the upgrades on this run were amazingly bad. Let's just say it like that. They really, really were amazingly bad put together. Really did my best there, but uh, that's one fun thing that I like about this game, that uh, every run has its quirks and flaws. Some runs are just a... Uh, a full-on success story after the first uh, 10 levels because you got spammed by legendary power-ups left and right and sometimes you just do your best strategy you're playing the winner strategy and still you, get, uh, you just don't get the pots together like not drafting enough agility that, that's bursting me down most of the time actually I win! Hooray! So where's the portal dude? So, there we go. We unlock the Templar's Verdict. Inflict your judgment at a random enemy's position, causing damage. That's so crappy. These spells are so crappy, dude. Unless the area effect is large enough. Although, five seconds cooldown, alright. It's at least fast, so it's exploding often. Alright, so uh, I'm taking uh, I'm taking wishes if there are any. If not, I'm uh, I'm just picking up the next class to uh, to get myself through because I don't want to play them doubly. So I'm going to take a big short break and I'll be right back.
No, nobody came up with a uh, something. Too bad. Then you guys have to live through my decisions, as usual. So I really got no clue. It's going to be the first time now for me to go on uh, Intensity 6. Doom Elementalist. Well, now I already picked that dude. We're going to play the Elementalist the next time. I just need to uh, soup up here everything currently. I have that configuration for for the speedruns. Because, uh, weirdly enough, enabling the Reckless Goblins and the Unholy Reinforcements on all levels helped me a lot to get the speedrun there. Like Chaos Doom, yeah, that was the plan, actually. So, uh, we're going to play Chaos Skills in this run, and, uh... Just dooming around, you know. So, let's see, there's uh, something su supposedly killing... Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's the Grim Reaper. That thing touches me, I die. It's a new edition of the latest difficulty level. You can't kill it, by the way. Or, or does it do insta-death? It, 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 it did, uh, it was, uh... It was written like it would kill instantaneously. So, what are we going to pick here? Wow, that's a piece of crap, dude. Wow. <clears throat> so, some more relentlessness is way better. Oh, well, we're playing Chaos, so we're playing Chaos Bomb, although I think that's, uh... See, in front of me spell, I never really tried it, I never get, really gave it a chance, so... Well, let's give that fine spell a chance, eh? So, holy moly, let's banish those effects so we don't get bothered by them more, more often. Seriously, who wants to be uh, who wants to pick armor upgrades for real? Although I I did check the numbers, you do get a quite nice uh, percentile reduction at that. They they do really once you focus harder into them, you do get quite a nice amount of stat. But at the same time, I don't know. I feel I feel like I uh, it doesn't feel too well. All right, so uh, oh boy. Well, that's uh, quite some upgrades there. All right. Let's go. Well, all of these are not too interesting, so let's reroll that for once. Let's pick up a chain lightning. Stats. Uh, Basically, so far, the most fitting scheme that uh, I've seen there. So, Frailty, I want that. Or, well... Chromatic Bolt, because then it's hard. The Chromatic Bolt is also Chaos, so... Damage increase for everything physical. No, thanks. Ugh. Whatever. So let's put up the magnetism a tad bit. Personally a big fan of having some magnetism. The earlier the better, because you know, the extra experience bonus is uh, best served as early as possible. Alright, we're doing quite some good damage already though. I'm gonna lie. So... Still gotta adjust that draft a little bit there. But on the, uh... oh yeah, well, no, we're going to take damage over that. No, I haven't played neither of these. But I gotta say, it's really hard to uh, to keep track of all the things that are uh, popping up these days. 
I really uh, don't want to be a game dev, game dev nowadays. So, multicast and everything missile, why not? Er, expansive on everything. The larger the better. For, for starters, that is. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Fateful Strikes. My Chaos spells might all inflict statuses, but, uh, you know, focusing into certain statuses is always a good thing. Go healing crystal, I need ya. Alrighty. So, uh, well, I probably should have picked up that uh, agility upgrade in now, because now no agility upgrades want to show up anymore. Typical. Be my guest, Void, be my guest. So, uh, we're going to pick up more Relentlessness here. Cast Rate is uh, always an amazing stat to pick up. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that job. Nice. This here, uh, these corners here are, as far as I've seen things, the best spots to uh, actually do your thing. Because there's also spawners on that rock. Not only on the long side of the walls, but also on that rock. Finally, some agility. Hell yeah. So, here, more, more chaos. The thing here is, one of the worst things is just the, the numbers are just off. Or those uh, single, up, uh, single upgrades there. So, multicast and everything burst. Well, Void, of course I do, but uh, we, we gotta do that uh, after this one, alright? We're, uh, we're gonna have a chat over, the, over at the Discord about that. Really nice of you, thank you. So, let's go for damage increase. Oh, I, uh, that was a hot one. Frailty versus agility, but, uh, you know... Frailty is just one of the most tasty um, stats. But uh, personally, I think agility was more important at the very moment. For real, but uh, whatever. I'm a greedy sucker. So, poisonous blood. Since I inf inflict statuses uh, all day long, it would be foolish not to pick that up, I think. So let's kill off some uh, some some turrets there. Yeah, let's cast magnetic chaos wave. Now we're talking. So finally, we got rid of all the uh, non chaos spells in our assortment. Personally, love to uh, go for for one specific flavor and then uh, ride it. So here, total focus on frailty again. That's just such a big upgrader. So, area of effect increases. Yeah, it's a purple upgrade, I'm sold. So let's see how that works out. We don't have the same uh, resilience, so I'm certainly feeling the damage here. Yeah, that's only because I didn't draft enough agility. Really feel like the more the longer I play this, the more I feel like the the verdict is: if you can um, neglect whatever is being offered, whenever there's uh, agility on the on the table, pick agility. Only for go agility if it's really either you're fast enough or you really need that other part. Because I I really noticed that. I do regret that always so much when I uh, when I don't draft on the fragility. It's going to make it in my tips uh, list there because of course I'm already working on tutorials. You guys know me. But for, for I do love one thing. The last couple of uh, weeks we had a lot of games where I I really had to sink my teeth into properly 
where I was able to consider making any uh, tutorials for real because they weren't they were too hard or too complex or uh, you know just took more of my time to get to a point where I feel like now I'm now I'm down and doing a tutorial. Same for this game. It might be, like uh, Void says here, that uh, you basically draft one school of things and then you're uh, pretty good off and, uh, and all. But at the same time, I find this game way more difficult than uh, most of the uh, Vampire Survivor um, spin-offs that I've played so far. That's positively a good thing. You know? I really, really enjoy that about this game. So... Put on more, a bit more relentlessness. I love cast speed reducers. Very, very feisty move. Dive in like that, but uh, went down well. So, oh, come on, give me, give me some agility. Even a twenty-person one, nice. Here we go. right on. Now we just need to amp up our damages and uh, uh, just uh, catch some more catch some more agility upgrades and then we're good to go. Because that's one department where I feel like this build is still quite lacking at. So just killing off some of those towers here because uh, they they are really more troublesome than you would think in the first place. So multicast on the chain lightning thingy, pretty cool. Well, let's go for a bit of mercilessness. Why not? Pretty crappy upgrade, but I felt like picking it never was. Why? I really don't know. Shouldn't have picked it, I guess. Alright, so this is way, way worse than the Paladin. Holy was way stronger, I think. But, uh, well. They also don't have uh, arcane power. Possibly that's uh, one thing that you really do notice. The extra multicast layers of arcane power are just nuts. Oh, we have two uh, copies of Kaythais, alright. So whenever there's something big on the horizon, I really need to dodge that. Could be a one-shot laser. Ah. Two of them are really, really uh, bad news. Righty right. So... Here, that's where I find the numbers are off here. I get a powerful strikes upgrade that gives 5% upgrade to uh, each and every skill on my bar. Or I get, what, damage upgrade of 15%, I think was a green one. That's where the numbers just don't add up. Because at increasing 5% of all my skills versus 15% on one skill, or was it not? Yeah. Alright, come on. Oh, well. This time I'm smarter than that, picking up the agility instead of the fateful strikes. As much as I want them, but uh, if I'm dead, I can't hurt anybody. So, gotta focus on staying alive first. Yeah, so far, difficulty 6 doesn't really differ too much from difficulty 5. Honestly. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. So, uh, yeah. Take the. Strikes. Although Unbreakable is one of the few upgrades that I really do like, for the fact that it gives you a nice uh, way of dealing with those poison puddles better, because, uh, you know, flat damage reduction is pretty cool in that regard, but uh, that's pretty much everything that I found so far that was cool about that part. That's just not enough, I think. 
So here we have the typical um, payoff situation, six bosses at once. You get used to it. That's just what happens when you're uh, not strong enough to kill your bosses in time anymore. Oh, there's a Chaos Golem. Well, with this run, I gotta say, did you see any group upgrades for everything Chaos? Me neither. That's why this run sucks so hard. That's one thing. Well, you never know what kind of stuff the, the game will toss at you, upgrade-wise. That's a bit sucky. Because I think, um, well, if I'd had drafted the, uh, the group upgrades for Chaos on this run, then uh, we th this would look a lot different already. Okay. Pick up some great one. Well. But, uh, well, the luck of the draft was not with us, so... Uh, game's harder. That's a weird mechanic. Well, that's only like uh, you said, Void, because of the fact that uh, it's just overpowered group upgrades, or the single upgrades are underpowered. That's a matter of perspective. Personally, think the group upgrades are just fine. It's the single upgrades that are underpowered at this point. Would be cool if specialization would it would be its uh, reward in its uh, own way, you know. As much as lethality was tempting me, I'm smarter than that now. Because you already might have noticed, taking so much less damage now that I'm uh, at uh, a decent level of agility. Movement speed is just a too imperative stat in this game, sadly. But is as it is, I'd say. So, well, this time I'm picking up the Fateful Strikes because I just realized that I feel fast enough. And Fateful Strikes is just so damn appealing. What the hell put me there? Alright. So, uh, that's bad because we have now no extra lives anymore. And there's an entire suite of bosses still up against my badge. Alright, so the last boxes are upon us. Gangrene, you yeah, know why not? I mean, we got stats galore on that character here, so... Or... Whatever you want to put it. So I'm I, I'm now playing extremely carefully. No no more risks. It's my only last life, and therefore we're, we're playing it uh, carefully here. We got two Alexis here this time, so there's a lot of poison puddles everywhere. But, uh, well, that ain't too much of a problem. There's no codex in the game. Yeah, that's true. They really need to work on that, too. You're damn right about that, man. Multicast on everything magical. So, yeah, I got it. It's at least something. That's been one of the worst drafts that I've had in a while, but um, still looks like we're winning it. Worst drafts and so far, because I ain't, because I feel like I ain't got any uh, big viable uh, group-wide upgrades there. You notice that the chaos bomb is only level five. That shows how many chaos uh, specific upgrades I got. Not too many. Oh, that's okay. I mean, right now, the thing I'm afraid about most, and uh, I'm. I'm I'm sad if that comes up a bit arrogant, I don't know, but let's put it down like, nevertheless. I am really afraid that the game might grow uh, too easy with the coming uh, versions. With new with new things added into the game and all, I'm really afraid that the, the game will grow too easy when you have too many options to tackle that. I personally enjoy the tough as nails part right now, where there's, uh, you know, for example, there are no legendary weapons or anything included right now in the game. And so far, all the characters that have weapons you can craft for them, well, let's just say those uh, items, th those weapons are big power-ups. That's uh, no understatement. So you get base stats for, for these uh, items. So The gist of it, I think, uh, 
once the game adds in more weapons and the like, it might become a lot easier to finish the uh, higher difficulty levels compared to now. Also, I'm trying to survive somehow because I'm uh, I'm down to 33 HP, and healing doesn't occur too often here anymore. Health gems don't spawn too often anymore, and uh, we need a crack ton of XP to level up. Level ups are among the only ways of, of uh, healing myself anymore. Healing myself at that point. Ten or more curse levels. Alrighty, great. Yeah, I feel like one of the big benefits about this game is that uh, the, uh, the 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 devs really seem to uh, have a good. A good focus, yeah. A good, a good focus on uh, on what's important for games like these. What's what's making it fun and, and the like. It's really refreshing to see uh, the work of passionate people there. Yeah. So let's pick up a little bit more agility. Why not? There's just so much stuff under my head. And as you see there, I'm, I'm mostly beating these guys now off the screen. That's uh, mostly because I'm so frail at this point. HP has gone low, no extra lives. I really want to win this, but... Uh, got killed by a good old tree again, but uh, that was a crappy draft. To begin. That was one of the most shitty drafts that I've had in a while. But whatever, it's okay. I don't mind. Losing is part of the game, and... Uh, would be boring if I'd be only winning. So let's try that one more time. And uh, let's try exactly the same build again, because, you know, I'm pretty confident that this was mostly just uh, sucky drafts. Like, uh, seriously, I don't know what the hell happened there. It was almost like there was the game has forgotten that there was a thing like uh, bonus for everything chaos. Seriously. And I didn't draft agility early enough. I really will work on that behavior too. Um, that's true, that's true. I rarely feel with this game like uh, it wasn't, uh, well, no, uh, different. Whenever I, I lose in this game, it really, I really often have the feeling of agency, like, uh, I did this wrong, I did that wrong, I could have done that better, this was because I did that, and so on and so forth. And that's really important. A lot of other games, my personal favorite example for uh, for what we're talking about here is uh, Risk of Rain 2. I love Risk of Rain 2, until it one-shots me. That pisses me off so hard that I stopped playing that game altogether. Seriously. I... well, it was two things. For Risk of Rain 2, it was for one, that one-shot thing, that they didn't get rid of uh, after even after the early axes, and the other thing, I, I hate the boss fight. I hate the entire last level. It's, it's effing long, it's boring, and the boss fight basically punishes you for having a good build. Like, what the hell? That was like uh, one of the biggest disappointments that I had in the whole genre. So, that was my personal impression. I, I really hate the finale of that game. And that's kind of sad, because, you know, the finale is what counts. I didn't like Myth uh, Mythrix boss fight at all. It just pissed me off, honestly. Felt like uh, I was just getting punished for, for having having good items. And that was, uh, I don't know, that, that just felt horrible. And the boss level is so huge! You float through empty valleys of, of levels such a long time, at least it was my impression. Don't know, maybe that got changed at some point. Would be awesome if so. But, uh, you know, no, no. And then added in the factor that uh, it just, uh, what well, risk of rain too, your runs just end so darn abruptly, it feels bad. That was my personal impression the whole time. Like, uh, it really pisses me off when I have a pretty good run, and all of a sudden, click, I didn't dodge a single bullet that I didn't pop or probably didn't even see, and I'm dead. Well, I don't know if you uh, have uh, 
came, if you already came to the phase with Mithrix where he just steals all your enemy, uh, all your items, and just, uh, you know, uses everything you got against you, that's the point where they just lost me. I don't like that kind of concept at all. I want to have that feeling as if, wow, I'm so overpowered, I'm even blasting through the boss fight because my build was so good, and not like, oh, yeah, the boss fight is now almost impossible because I did a good draft. It just sucks. I don't know. Whoever came up with the idea, I hope other people like it more than me. That's all I can say. I didn't like it. As you can obviously see. So how did you feel about that mechanic void? I'm really uh I'm really curious to see to, to hear about it. Because for me the feeling of having to fight the last boss of the game just with my basic skills all of a sudden crappy. Dunno. How totally crappy. Ah, great. That's great for co-op, but what about the single players? You know, I, I'm a lot. I'm I'm a lot of a solitary player. Well, I did quickly lose my interest after uh, after uh, playing around with Mythbricks due to the fact how he works. That was my point. Like, the moment I realized that the fight gets harder, the better my build is. So basically the game is trying to funnel me towards getting as fast as possible to the boss fight. That was just not my cup of tea. Sure, uh, it, it is great that Risk of Rain gives you always constantly that incentive to push forward by punishing you for lingering and all, but that just uh, took it to way too far for my taste. Yeah, well, Monsoon difficulty is uh, is pretty cool. That's true. Um, I was playing around with that a lot too, but uh, like I said, broke my motivation. Now, just plainly broke my motivation. To know that every every run will culminate in a boss fight that I don't like, but it doesn't matter. There's way more than enough games that I don't have time to play anyway, so that's not the big deal. So let's see if we get better better chaos drafts this time for Christ's sake. We had one uh, all all chaos skills get damage up uh, draft already. So probably will kick out one uh, one spell like uh, I don't know which damage increase chaos bomb. Why not? say yeah that's uh that's something i also agree with I, I, my personal impression of uh, risk of rain was they had such a great start but the execution in the end just didn't convince me it just didn't convince me and uh yeah my my first uh my first experience with uh, the co-op of Risk of Rain was that I started, that I logged into a party in a game, and I opened a chest, and then somebody uh, wrote a lot of expletives on me, because I opened that chest before he was able to to open it. And that sums up everything you uh, were saying there, Jose. That's exactly uh, the, the, the quintessence of what you're stating there. So... Yeah, I guess you're right about that. This uh, competitive way of uh, itemizing is just uh, pretty annoying because it benefits everybody with uh, with higher um, with a higher level of meta knowledge. Because basically, if you know where the stuff's at, you know where the stuff's at. If you know where the uh, typical spawn points of the chests are, you have a vast advantage over every newbie. 
and uh, well, I wouldn't say it's uh, it was destroyed by uh, by the community. No, I'm just uh, disagreeing heavily with the uh, design philosophy of the um, of the devs at at these points. That's all that I'd say. I think a lot of people do like it, but uh, I I don't take like that. I do like uh, boss fights that don't punish me for a good build, for example. I find that a highly toxic mechanic because, you know, when I, whenever I, I manage to make my character really bonkers OP, I want to feel rewarded for that and not punished. And, um, yeah, on top of that, the co-op uh, co methods that, uh, you know, I mean, I do, I do understand where they're coming from and uh, what the intentions behind that are. And at the end of the day, I got to say, it might be also a damn smart way of keeping the of keeping the the game exciting in a way. But it might be also just a crappy uh, idea. And the unlock system is also well. I keep saying that with a lot of games. I'm I'm not a big fan of the entire roguelite um, concept. I'm a big fan of roguelikes, where you got a massive library of things, all on your head, all at once, and then it's up to me to figure out what's there. Feeling lost between all that goodness is a great feeling, in my humble opinion, at least. And uh, unlocking things. Uh, bit by bit. I don't know, I don't like to get patronized by games like that. And quite often I get bored out by roguelites before they uh, they reach a point that would possibly even entertain me. But, uh, you know, I'm not down with grinding my way through layers of boring gameplay before I get to win the first time, actually. Not my cup of tea. There's a couple of games that made it really, that, that performed it really well. Hades, for example is a very, very good candidate who shines in the roguelite um, department against a storm if you were looking for something less uh, action-based. Well, Circadian Dice suffers from that... Uh, from the from the indie from the indie sickness, it's one of those titles that's so darn indie that uh, people won't touch it because it's not mainstreamy enough. We really are in a weird spot where we got gamers that are playing very demanding games, and they they do love complexity in games, and uh, you just make them pissed if you take down the complexity. And then we got the gamers that take stuff way more casually, and they are the majority. And therefore, our games get more and more casual, because, you know, you either appeal gamers like us, I guess most people that are watching my channel at least are more in the department of the complexity gamers, we're just the suffering end of that, of this, of that development. Well, Material is uh, actually one brilliant example of making uh, a roguelike with roguelite elements and doing it great at the same time, because uh, you do unlock a lot of stuff in Tales of Material, but at no point it gives you the feeling that you were um, stunted to begin with, or you were you were weighed down by the game design because the new stuff you unlocked was so much better than the old stuff. No, it just gives you more options that are fitting to the game's lore, and uh, that's pretty brilliant. Magial is one, one magnificent game in that regard. I just don't like uh, the fact that one, one game takes so darn long. It's one of the slowest roguelikes that I know, where you can't play one character way too long for my taste. But they are really, really doing the, their stuff well in Machel. I really like that game for bad. Well, I did play a uh, a ton of Montreal back then when it was really new. 
and uh, I, I kind of like burned myself out during that period. And uh, when the game actually uh, was darn finished and very mature and ready to be enjoyed, I was so burned out with <laughs> the early access stuff that I didn't really touch it ever again. That's that happened. That that's the darkest dungeon effect. Uh, I like to call it like that because Darkest Dungeon was actually the first game that did this to me. Good God, I'm so squishy. Well, or I'm not paying attention well enough because I'm chatting too much. Who knows? But no, I think I should have drafted more Behemoth uh, upgrades. Really don't uh, feel like it suits me too well to uh, ignore the HP upgrades too much. That's one thing I did wrong there. Ow! There we go. So, taking down some of these uh, obelisks here, just to make sure that uh, we don't run into that much artillery fire anymore. Yeah, let's take a run into that direction. Oh, come on. Where's the next health gem? Yeah, I'm clinging to my extra lives in case you didn't notice already. I mean, there is no such thing as a uh, time limit on these levels, so there's no reason not to play it safe when you're currently when you're starting to go low. So here's a... Uh, you see, we got some HP back. So I don't like the word by nature from book extension. So, uh. Yep, Shishiro, total recommendation on Tales of Majel. I uh, already own pretty much everything that was uh, released of a bad. I think I'm missing one DLC. Hey! Thanks, guys. I just uh, got back to HP, then I touched one skill. Uh, yeah, this dude just has way uh, too low base HP, and I underestimated that. that was my bad. Damn. Will cost me the run, I think. Maybe we can mitigate that, but uh, pretty darn hard. What I like about this game, every new difficulty level is certainly uh, challenging. Unless you pr play Sentinel, then nothing is challenging anymore. So we got, er, what do I have? Two stacks of frailty, and uh, well, I don't even see how many stacks of fate. That that's one thing that really uh, has to be changed as well. I really want to see how many stacks I have of one upgrade more quickly. Searching it down there in the hot bar just sucks. That's just so darn sucky. Oh boy. There. What the hell? Why wasn't I able to move? Ah, yeah, I bet the poison boss knocked me down. They do that, you know. Manifestations of chaos. And also the achievements completed, they, they tear down way too fast. It's just one thing that I already noticed a lot of times. If the reroll mastery, yep, I, uh... I don't know if that... No, I don't think I have that already. I, I had just a five lord, 500 lords slain achievement, so... Well, Tales of Immortal was a game that had a lot of uh, promise, but I actually don't believe in it anymore. I don't believe in those devs to make it really fun. The grind is just too punishing in that game. My personal taste. So, uh, yeah, you gain one extra reroll every five levels. Yeah, sure. That's so stupidly strong, I agree. So. Alrighty, guys, so I'm going to take a break at this point. I thank you all for the jolly good time of that. We're going to continue with something else later down the road. I'd say leave me a comment down below, leave me a thumbs up on that stream, or just... 
subscribe if you haven't done so already there's daily stuff coming up from my side also down there in the description box if you missed the stream check out twitter and discord i announce all the stuff that happens before it happens there and uh, you can just do the bell thing if you want to stay up to, up to date there as well and if you like that channel so much that you even want to open your wallet for me there's support links down there patreon paypal and buy me a coffee are ways and means to support this channel and i'd be really delighted because i have no big uh partner there that's supporting me so appreciate all the support from you folks that are already happening and see you all during the next one have a good one and see you there folks